Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, today's pre-stream patter was no patter at all. It was silence. <coughs> okay, hoping to get back into uh, streaming. I think I was gone the last couple of days. You are welcome. Uh, but I found something really interesting that I did want to stream. Um, and I learned today on the uh, Wolfram channel, and I'll go ahead and put that up here so you guys know what that is. It's this. It's the Wolfram channel. And there's also a uh, Stephen Wolfram channel, which I'm not going to don't remember how to spell, so um, so I won't put it up here. But the Wolfram channel, one thing I learned is apparently you can embed Wolfram uh, cloud, uh, Wolfram language notebooks into JavaScript using this uh, this magical uh, thing that they created. So I'm 99% sure this is not going to work uh, because nothing in the universe ever works and life sucks. But we're going to try it, and if it's possible, that means in theory we could use Wolfram Alpha notebooks not only the ones that are sort of a closed form, but you know ones where wh where you have um, wh where you have sliders and other control boxes uh, to do things. Now, of course, Wolfram Cloud is a free language. The cloud is free up to a certain point, um, but the language is not open source. So I'm not crazy about using it. Uh, at the same time, JavaScript is a really sucky language too. So this is sort of a uh, you know um, contest of suckinesses in which perhaps having another method to create JavaScript um, applications could be helpful. Um, but then again, you know, that's just speculation. All right, so let's go ahead and do a git clone. And do I actually probably not git copy, but anyway. All right, that was pretty quick. So let's see what we have here. Now, remember, I've literally not looked at this at all, so we're looking at this for the first time together. Um, it does not use an iframe, but renders the notebook directly into the given DOM node for a more seamless experience. Now, this is already seeming like sort of a bad thing because it looks like um, this just basically calls up a web page that's running Wolfram Cloud. So that's not very interesting. Um, we also have this issue here that this looks like it's for uh, Node.js, but let's, let's, okay, this is also Node.js. Um, let's see. I didn't know you could do script cross origin source. Okay, so it looks like you can use it um, in, uh, looks like you can use it in, in uh, client side JavaScript as well, but unfortunately, it does look like all you're really doing is, even though you're not iframing, um, what you're actually doing here appears to be uh, using um, server-side rendering or something that's not very interesting. Uh, but, you know what? Um, let's see. Okay, well, some of the ex examples, perhaps. Um, always good to look at examples to watch things fail. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is not looking great here. This just looks like it's basically... Um, it's basically just basically loading a page here. And it doesn't look like you can do much with it. But you know what? Let's look at some of the other examples. Maybe one of the other ones is better. Let's see. Let's look at the second to biggest one called manipulate.html. Um, okay. Um, yeah, this does not appear to convert Wolfram notebooks uh, into JavaScript. It just basically lets you access them from an existing URL, which is not very exciting. Um, all right, so this is this is disappointing almost immediately. Um, Server-side rendering example, which we really don't want one of. Um, let's see what dimensions.html does. So let's see. So why don't we take a quick look at these using um, using Firefox, using the Firefox file command. So this should bring up basic example. That is basic. Um, hmm. 
Hmm. So that's kind of bad that that didn't even work, but unless there's a... Hmm. That's not cool. Let's see if there's a... Uh, let's look at the, the console here and see what's going on. Wolf Ram Notebook Embedder. Okay, let's see. Failed for the script. This. Okay, already bad. The character was not uh, defined. Okay, I think we might be able to um, to get around that real quick um, by running this from a different directory. So let's do this. Again, not looking too good. Control Shift K. <sighs> Failed for using examples. Dist Wolfram. No. Oh. Um, yeah, so let's see where, where examples dist notebook embedder actually is. Uh, that's weird, but it, it's not here. So apparently, um, do, do they mean source? Do they mean dist? Do they mean source? What the fuck do they mean? All right, let's go back to the example. So this is really has gone downhill very, very quickly. Um, okay, so this might be a little bit better because it apparently does not try to to uh, include something that doesn't exist. Always a bonus. Oh, here we go. Um, so this is... Okay, this is load static HTML. Yeah, this is not looking too good at all. So this kind of this kind of sucks. It's taking me about five minutes to uh, uh, to destroy this. This is a um, this is really just a um, just a frame around an existing notebook. Which notebooks can be used can be still be interesting because they can be used on the web by anyone. So for example, you know th there is there is some 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 benefit here to having running a notebook. Uh, you know, but this has nothing to do with JavaScript. This is something you could do, cur you know, completely within uh, within Mathematica. Write an interface and have it do things, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But it, it again, moves further and further away from the concept of uh, of uh, open source because then pretty much you're giving the cloud all the control. However, it's something interesting. We might look at it at some point. Uh, this is, of course, my um, my code. This has no sliders or anything in it, so it's not very uh, it's not very interesting. We may create at some point something that does have sliders in it. Okay, so that went downhill really quickly. Um, fuck this. Okay. Now, um, so something else interesting came up. We'll go ahead and go to astronomy.stackexchange. In my in my mailbox, I did want to answer a few questions. Um, can I, can I see all items? Woo! Who knows? Um, okay, and this was someone pointed out that my observed uh, rise set time zones near second question was a little bit off because it does depend on the local horizon. Um, this is clearly not going well, but fine. Okay. From set of ellipse relations. How long have we been going? I want to see if we can just kill this. Nine minutes. We're nine minutes in and it sucks. Okay. Let's see if we can recover. Finding ellipse formulas from set of ellipse relations, again, not what I'm looking for. Um, if we want to encode the place and date in the star pattern, the moon does only move about half a degree per hour, so you need an angular precision of less than whatever. 11% um, minority could, in theory, pass constitutional amendment. Um, something is very wrong here. Um, and I, I probably need to figure out what the hell is going on here. Um, either someone has deleted, let me reload this page just in case. Um, okay, and it is Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so I'm going to skip it. Okay, oh, sorry, let's look at this. Wow, I could have sworn I had other, uh, question requests in my, in my stack. Uh, either they've totally gone away, or... Um, someone, you know, something, I've gone, I've gone insane. Both are possible. 
Okay, so we've actually, one of the questions was, uh, uh, is, was asking about whether the reason that patterns don't repeat uh, of, you know, when, when planets are in the same constellation is because of precession, which the answer is no. Fortunately, ha, I did have a backup plan. Uh, and that is when you look at lunar occultations, and I actually did some work in advance for this. Uh, the lunar occultation occurs when the moon moves in front of a, a star. Uh, of course, it could also be other occultations, for example, you know, um, uh, an asteroid could move in front of a star or something like that. So lunar occultations are probably the most visible because the moon is quite visible, whereas asteroids are not always visible. Uh, having planets occult stars is also interesting. So what I've already done previously, and it better work, um, wait, why are there two of these? H by G, data, okay. Okay. I basically created a list of all the stars that are brighter than magnitude 5.5. And why is this not, okay, I guess that's correct. Um, and I've put them into C uh, array form, and I've even tested that this form works. Uh, and, the, and the fields in each are, you know, the ID, which is just the HYG data ID that the author of HYG data gives it. The magnitude, which all of these will be below 5.5, uh, meaning they'll all be bright enough to be, um, to be visible. Uh, absolute magnitude, which is not really interesting, but it just, uh, in fact, ooh, it's actually redundant now that I think about it, because you could get it from the others. Oh, shit. Okay, well, live and learn. Um, okay. And then the X, Y, and Z position as, um, as determined, I think, from... That's a damn good question. I need to figure that out, too. I think it, it'll, be, it'll be in the readme. Um, I think it is from the galactic center, or I hope it's from the ecliptic or the equator. Make it a lot easier. And then the motion, the proper motion of the star, um, you know, based in, in terms of dx, dy, dz. So the idea here is we can look at the angle of the moon from the geocenter, and then we can look at the, uh, the angle to the star, and if they're very close to each other, the, the angle between the Earth, moon, star, that means the moon is occulting the, the star. Now there's, there's a couple of really interesting caveats here because the moon is so close that depending on where you are on the Earth, the moon is in a different position. And the moon also has an angular radius of about 16 minutes of arc, uh, which means also that um, that the uh, that it, it blocks up quite a bit of the sky. So there's a couple of things going on there. Um, so the first thing we need to do is um, um, the first thing we need to do is. Uh, figure out what this something I should I should know, but and it's in it's in the readme. But uh, figure out what coordinate system they're using, and I'm pretty sure this is in parsecs, not in light years. That doesn't really matter, but that's just a thing to be be aware of. We're only going to be interested in the angle for right now, uh, and and it the angle doesn't actually change based on the unit of measurement because it's going to depend on tangents and stuff like. It's going to depend on ratios of these numbers, uh, which so any unit would cancel out. Okay, so now, really heading towards another, um, maybe don't need, pretend I didn't even do this. All right, H, Y, Z, read me. Okay. Shiny, I'm signing Ms. Barry Carter. Did you know that? Um, the most current version, da 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 The Cartesian chord, yes, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste this in. Yep. Is the direct, yeah, this is good. So it is equatorial coordinates, which is good, because those are the kinds I can actually use that, that I mean, I can, um, that um, uh, C-Spice uses. And I think um, the, the unit here is parsecs, although he doesn't say it. Um, Okay, we'll go ahead and put this in here too. And I need to double check that the unit is parsecs, but I'm pretty sure that is correct. Um, 
a parsec. I th well, actually, I think he tells us what a parsec is. It's the distance from which the Earth-Sun orbit looks appears to be one second of uh, of arc. Um, stars distance in parsecs. Okay, so okay. Uh, units are parsecs. All right, so we're going to start off with some very simple calculations. Um, and we're going to do some, there's a few clever things we're going to be able to do here. One of them is that uh, instead of trying to find, the moon can only move so fast. It moves very fast, but it, there is a finite limit to it. So we only have to check every so often to see whether or not the moon is occulting uh, a star. Um, but we need to be able to catch situations where uh, the moon just barely occults a star so we need to sort of have two windows, one large window to see if there's any occultation to see whether there, you know, the moon gets within a certain amount of degrees close to something, to a star, and then a smaller, uh, inside that interval, we need to make a f more granular search to see if it actually occults something. Okay. So I think... Unfortunately, I don't think it's here, but I have somewhere I have something called lunar eclipses, um, and I think I've already used up the word occultations to mean something else. And uh, actually, this is sort of bad because the BC occultations I have here assume that we're looking at uh, three spheres uh, occulting each other. Um, you know, in other words, one sphere occulting another sphere is viewed from a third sphere. Stars are technically spheres, but they're so far away. Uh, and they don't have spice IDs or anything, uh, you really, c we could really treat them as points. We don't have to treat them as, as stars. We don't have to treat them as spheres. We can treat them as, as just points of light. Uh, so this doesn't do that. Um, so that's sort of a bad thing. Um, so we will need a different program. I don't want to mess with the ones we already have. That weird just there is because of the way we, we, we mount. And I, I know there's something called BC Lunar, uh, I think I'm being so, yeah, Lunar Eclipse. I'm so funny. Um, um, I think I have an actually not, go. Oh, actually maybe I did get around to it. Um, I don't think I got very far on that. So um, here we're just going to be, we're going to go sort of the opposite of giving fancy names and say BC moon occults star dot c and we will include wow that was so close to being a um a sl uh, hash bang which tells the shell to run another uh program to interpret the file okay um bc lib does not include hyg data on purpose because it's really big and to be honest i don't think it should have included um the the constellation data either uh, that it does include, because you, most of the time we don't need that. But for right now, we will go ahead and do this. And I think that won't actually work now that I think about it, because we might need a full path there. But then again, we might not. Okay. And as always, let's create a, a main function. Um, let's just look at something here. Playground. Yeah, let's look at bcconstell.c. Um, what's interesting here is we're only going to be talking about our moon for right now, and we're only going to be talking about sp a specific list of stars we're already given. We're not going to give those as options. So, blah, 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 blah. This is what I'm looking for. Okay. Now, I want to make sure we got all this, uh, we got all this going, going well. So, let's go ahead and make sure that we can say, like, printf uh, percent. And I did, actually, I did this in example uh, dot in playground dot um, c last night off stream um, and I did I did this uh, printing of data here um, that just basically shows the magnitude so let's go ahead and do that here just because I'm uh, I can't think of anything else to do at the moment um, and we can also check to see that this all compiles and it all works the way we want it to work uh, all this good stuff here so it's BC moon occults and I think you see, all right, so I did, I mean, it compiled at least. And I think I have to do a rehash because this is the T-shell. Okay, and that looks like it's the, it's the um, magnitude of the planets. I, I may have, I maybe should have uh, sorted this by magnitude order because 
we're more interested in brighter uh, occultations than we are in dimmer occultations, but that's okay. Okay, so now, uh, let's see. I want to find the moon's position from Earth at, let's say now, or well, you know, it's close to now. Okay. So we will go to the ma massively interesting bclib.h, which doesn't exist. Kind of sad. Let's do that again. Okay. And by the way, when I said it shouldn't include the uh, the planets, what I'm talking about here is, um, what am I talking about here? Oh, maybe I didn't include it. Good, good for me. Yeah, this. Oh. Do I do that include every time? That's hideously inefficient. Um, I mean, that means this array is redefined every time I call this. Ooh, that's ugly. We might need to look into that at some point. Uh, so I'll make, make a little note. Um, I mean, that, that is hideous, actually, so that's what's happening. We should either load it at the beginning of the whole bclib.h or load it on a per program basis as necessary. Um, okay, so now what we're looking for is... I forgot. Uh, right, that was just wanted to show you what the include was that shouldn't be there. Okay, so now what we want to do is... Why am I here? I don't know. Um, oh yeah, I want to use the function et... I actually want to use unix to et, I think. Um, and what is right now? Does anyone know what time really is? It's this. It's this number right here. This is about one billion, I think, something. I think that's where we are in the clock. Okay, and basically what I want to do now is I want to figure out the moon's position. Um, so, it's going to be a three array vector. And it is um, EZP, I think. Oh, uh, let's just... I got something that I feel like I've never used this program at all. Okay. So we're basically going to be saying... Um, G2000. We want the position of... We want to know what the EZP function does, because I never remember which order the parameters are in. Yeah, this is... Alright, and I do have a local copy of this documentation here. Uh, speak. I think it's called the it Easy Reader, Easy Position. Um, I'm tempted to use Easy... Why well, don't I want to use this? Because it gives back a, a six... Yep, it gives back six elements. This gives back the number of elements I need, which is just, just the position. Okay, so the target will be... Um, Targets the moon, which is 301. The um, time is the time that we just set up to be equal to approximately now. Um, okay, do I... So this is what I not didn't want this, or did I do want this? Um, some days, eh? Uh, all right, this is the uh, this is the uh, epoch, which is J2000, uh, the equator, because that's how the uh, positions of the stars are measured. And then we want to do light aberration correction, I think this is. Um, yeah, it is ab correction. The moon is like one light second away. Um, so I'm going to do CN plus S, but to be honest, that is insanely bad. And the stars' positions are given as viewed from Earth, so we don't do... I mean, if we actually gave them where they were, you know, right now, they would be very different because they're several light years away. But we don't do that correction for the stars. We only do it for the moon where it's unnecessary. But I'll do this just to slow the program down a little bit <sighs> to make it more accurate. But you never really know. Okay. And then we need the viewer, I believe, the, per the thing that is viewing. Uh, observer. And then um, we need a light time travel, which is going to be less than a second, by the way. Um, so 
So we need the observers 301 and the this is this. And let's see if we can do a printf. Uh, well, you know what? Let's just see if we can get that. Um, this is going to be okay because we're actually um, looking at, we're only going to compute the moon position for right now for just once. Later we're going to be a little bit more sophisticated with this. Um, so right now we're only going to try to find out what star is closest to the to the moon, and then we'll use our friend Stellarium to find out uh, whether or not uh, you know this this program is giving us accurate data. Okay. Uh, hopefully that did something. No, it didn't. So for some reason the make failed. Um. Too few arguments. I knew it. I knew I was missing with uh, uh, one there. All right. And by the way, the Earth, the observer is actually Earth, not the Moon. So have to fix that. Um, target ET. Reference frame aberration correction. Yeah. Observer. The thing I want to put it in. That would be good, huh? If I actually gave it the variable we needed. The whole point of this is to compute the moon pause variable. Okay. Okay, here we go. Yep, because we need to, of course, include standard.tm. Alright, so we're going to get our load our standard kernels here. And let's go ahead and do that. Okay, at least it ran. Alright, hang on. The variable the variable need to Oh, shoot. Yes, I need to do this earlier. In fact I need to do it right up here because to compute Unix to ET I do need to know what the number of leap seconds are that have expired so far. Let's try that again. Uh, there we go. Um, okay, fantastic. So now we know the moon's position. So now, um, we need to take the vector, we need to take the angle between the moon's position and the star's position. And that, God willing, should be pretty easy. Um, I think it's Vec Ang, and I always get that one wrong. Let's see if it is. Is it Ang Vec? What the hell is it? Um, it's one of the nice functions that actually only returns, um, that actually returns a double instead of uh, returning something inside of a variable that you send it. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and look up here. I have no memory. Uh, the computer has some, I don't. Um, phase angle quantity, no. All right. Um, all righty, uh, separation, is that what I'm looking for? Yeah, it is separation on angle. Uh, angular separation, VSEPC. That's why I always get it wrong. Okay. VSEPC. And I'm pretty sure I can send it. Uh, let's see. VSEPC takes two vectors. And I'm pretty sure I can send it. Um, the moon pause is one vector, obviously. The other vector is going to be, um, let's see, god damn it. It's going to be um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, the clever thing is I should just be able to send it this and it'll automatically pick off the next two coordinates because it knows it expects a three element vector. Uh, if this doesn't work then I am going to be screwed because that means that well then I'll have to create another vector 
just to hold this vector so I can take the um, so I can take the, uh, the separation. Um, so it is Pomodoro time. I will be back in two and two. And we are back. Or we will be back as soon as I finish doing that. Okay. All right. So this may or may not work. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that's a that's a. Uh, and we will keep track of which star this is. So in theory, this should print out a list of how close the moon is to various stars in our HYG database. Um, and I'm not actually sure I want to do that. Mm, actually, I probably want to print out to make it easier to recognize. Uh, I probably want to print out the ID that uh, Mr. HYG guy has assigned it. So in fact, we just, it turns out that's a floating point number. Um, so that's going to be HYG data. Because all, because you have to have the same type inside of an array, inside of an array, even in a regular array, everything has to be of the same type. And since some of the numbers are floating, I made them all a floating point. Uh, so this should just be this. So this will tell you which one in the HYG data array, the separation between the moon and that point at the about five minutes ago. So let's see if we can get that to rock and roll. Okay. Um, oh. Cannot convert to pointer type. Okay, something really ugly has happened here. Um, oh, I need another that. That's why. Hopefully that'll do it. Cannot convert to a pointer type. Okay. Um, so we're going to print out uh, two floating point numbers. One of which is... HYG data IO, which should be fine. And the vector separation between moon pause and which maybe should not also be fine. Maybe that's un it's unhappy with this. Um so what's it complaining about the convert to pointer type? Am I missing a semicolon? No. 
Okay. It does also occur to me that I really cannot get away with doing this because I want to use the prop, eventually use the proper motion of the stars as well. I'm not going to do it right now, but since I do want to do it uh, e eventually, we can do this. And so, to do, add proper motion. But for right now, we'll say star pause zero. I'm tempted to say star pause equals HYG data I uh, five, but I'm not going to quite risk that. So we're going to go ahead and assign them one element at a time. So this will be the X element. I could make a little tiny for loop out of this in case anyone's wondering. I'm not going to. Um, six and seven, and proper motion would just be like plus something times, uh, you know the next few characters or whatever. Okay, so the difference is going to be between moon pause and star pause, um, and then this better freaking compile. There we go. And so BC moon occult star. Um, okay. And then we do a sort minus K2NR. And I probably didn't mean to do NR, I probably meant to do just K2N. Okay. So this is not impressive. This says that the vector separation between moon pause and star pause is a minimum of one radian, and I don't think the moon is that far away from things. Um, let's see here. Star pause. I guess we'd print star pause to make sure. Mm. Maybe I've got the wrong, uh, maybe I'm using the wrong numbers. So, zero, one, two, three, four, five, ooh, oh, I am using the wrong numbers. Wait, ID, magnitude, absolute magnitude, followed by X, Y, and Z, right? Yeah, so this is zero here, one, two, and then three, four, five, so I'm way off. Um, yeah, my, my, my mistake there. And a miscount. Okay, now let's try it. Okay. Looks a little bit better. So the closest star to the moon right now is going to be uh, 39667, which let's find out what that is. Um, so it's a 5.3 magnitude star. We don't really know that much more about it. Um, but of course, this is our excuse to bring up Mr. Stellarium. Assuming it doesn't crash. It did crash. I don't know why it crashes here, but it doesn't crash here. Um, this is a, a mystery of the universe. Okay. Okay, let's find out where the moon is. Big star. Now, of course, um, let's. I wish we could start with time stop. It, th that might be a way to do that, actually. All right, so let's take a look at how far this is um, by going back over here. And we could, of course, make this into, and we probably should actually make this into. Uh, into degrees. So this thing about 0.68 of a degree, which means it's wider than the moon. So it's not going to be behind the moon, it's going to be just close to the moon. So let's zoom out here. Um, okay, and I probably need to turn down the amount number of stars we're showing. Let's go ahead and do that. Limit magnitude to... Um, uh, I think I did 5.5 for the... Uh, for the... for the HYG d data catalog. So let's go ahead and do this. So, no, that's not being lit up anymore. Um, new Cancerous. Is this, the, this is the 5.3 degree uh, star that's in there, and it is, um, it is the closest. I mean, although there's really, uh, unfortunately, well, there is a way to look at it, and this is, again, very ugly, but we know that it's... Um, We know that it's star 39667, so we can grep for it in the HYG catalog, 
And one of the things we should learn is uh, its name, if it has one, and mu cancer I probably does, is a recognized name. Okay. So we actually want this to be comma, this comma this. There's still two of them, but okay. Um, links new cancer eye. Okay, so it does look like we've got we've got this uh, kind of nailed down here. Um, so now what we want to do is we I mean again we're not we're not really doing the search for occultations yet. We're still kind of just fooling around with this. Um, hello, 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 fierce crocodile. How are I am doing well. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see anyone in chat. How goes? And while you speak unto me, I shall speak unto my viewer, which is you. Let's see. Oh, so it looks like fierce crocodile has been struck down by the coronavirus. Very sad. Um, I was watching a presentation on the coronavirus earlier today. Uh, but it was boring, and so I didn't pay attention. Uh, well, if you do die of the coronavirus, we, I do want to say that you have my sympathy, and I will maybe dedicate a stream to you. Maybe. Depends on how I feel. Um, so this is, this is good. What we want to look for now, um, what we want to look for now is where the moon is more than, less than half a degree away from something, which is which is an occultation. Um, so what we're going to do here, um, and so we're going to say double sep equals v sep moon start position. Getting a running nose, which is not typical of corona, so I guess I am safe. Well, you, you have to realize it's possible that you have the coronavirus, and in addition you have like a flu or a cold, which is just giving you sort of the secondary weakness, either because corona weakened your immunity to begin with, or the other virus or flu that you have, or cold that you have, which is a rhinovirus, which is a virus, weakened you, and the coronavirus sort of stepped in while you were weakened. I actually had an experience like that where I got really, really sick for a while because I ate some bad, um, bad uh, meat. I think I got, um, not salmonella, or E. coli, or I think it was trichin trichinosis. Uh, and then just as I was recovering from it, I got shingles. So... It's always possible you're being, you know, that it's a worse sign that you're sick because now the coronavirus can get in there and, and kill you more easily. Although technically the coronavirus is not very fatal, not very poisonous, so I would, I would not worry too much uh, yet. But if you die, then I would worry. But then you're dead, so you don't have to. So if we look at the vector separation, <laughs> um, we can say something like if sep is less than... Um, Let's see. Um, I mean the moon's uh, it's actually 16 over, you know. We're, we're going to look at it much, much more carefully uh, because the moon's position does vary depending on where you are on Earth. For right now, I'm trying to find something that's reasonable. Um, let's say less than a hundredth of a degree, then we, we might have some interest there. Now this isn't particularly useful because we just went through all of these. Um, so now what we can do is um, uh, we could just sort of loop through the moon's position like hour to hour and just just for fun see what's going on. Well, at some point we do need to um, you know use the geometrical search and all this good stuff. We do, we don't we're not going to sort of boggle our way through it mindlessly like we're about to do now. So. All right, so it j is equal to, th oh, I guess we could just say equal to et. Yeah, that is an, oh, it's not an integer, it's a double. Um, and j is less than et times uh, 86,400 seconds times 366 days. And j plus equals 3,600. And then the star pauses don't change except for uh, proper motion, which I'm ignoring right now. Um... And of course, the big problem now is, of course, I have to recompute, which I, which I kind of had, I knew I was gonna have to do anyway. Uh, moon pause is no longer a fixed number; we do need to recompute it every time. Uh, so we can't just print it out; we do have to recompute it. That's the thing that's really changing. Uh, we can be a little bit more clever and only recompute it once per loop instead of once per, per per outer loop, sort of once per inner loop. And this is going to be at time j. 
So I'm not really expecting anything to come out of this because I still think that, uh, well, I don't know if we're going to see an occultation of the moon, but we might for some of the fainter stars. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a, um, ooh, once again, useful to be in the correct directory. Hmm. Oh, now I've got an extra parentheses here because I had it inside of a printf. Minor issue, but you know, that's how you write code. Oh. Um, is that, am I beyond the end of the input now? No, that's fine. Oh shoot, I'm inside of a double loop, so I need to finish off the second uh, loop here. So this finishes off the if statement, which means I really should be, this finishes off the for int, this finishes off this for int, this finishes off the function, uh, which we do need an exit minus one from because the function is supposed to return an int. I guess exit minus one does the same thing, but technically this is cleaner. Okay. Let's run this sucker, see what happens. I didn't really expect to be right when I said it wouldn't nothing was gonna show up, but apparently I am. Um let's make this a little bit more flexible, let's say one over seventy-five. Uh, which is not enough for an occultation, but it is enough to um, to check to see that the function, the program hasn't totally broken itself. Okay, not looking too good. Um, let's go to one over fifty. Although I'm becoming very suspicious now because I'm pretty sure we did see a one that was below one over seventy-five. Um, do I need, do I need one slash dot? Oh, 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 yeah. You're correct. In some versions of C, um, actually this might be happening here. This number will not increment properly because it could be that this looks like an integer. Um, so yes, you are, oh yeah, you're right. Because SEP is, so you're right, this might actually be, one dot over 50 or there's someone there needs to be a dot here i don't i think the version of c i'm using does not does let me get away with what i'm doing here um but let's find out um okay not looking good okay so let's do this um there's several places that i actually need to do this yeah, the stand I'm sure the standards say that it's supposed to do it the correct way, but, you know. Um, oh, this might be, you're right, this might be frickin' integer division, which means I'm basically asking it for be to be less than zero. So let me see if I'm using division anywhere else. I don't think I am. All right, if this works, I'm going to be, again, annoyed with C, which is my perpetual state of annoyance with C. But thank you. You will have actually contributed. I mean, not that I... Okay, what the hell? I think something didn't compile there correctly. Hang on. I biffed something up there. So force compile. Yeah, well now I put in the one... Oh, well the one point should be more than enough. But, I mean, if this, this doesn't work, then we have bigger problems. So let's see what this does. Okay, it did compile. Oh shit, there we go. Alright, thank you, Mr. Smarty Pants. You are very correct. It was the one point that I needed. Uh, and now I can go back to saying one over, um, was it, was it 100 I decided was what I wanted? Okay. And it of course, okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two.
and we are back. Thank you for pointing that out. And yeah, you are correct. That was integer division. So I was asking for set to be less than zero and the angle between two vectors can't be less than zero. Okay. Another thing I actually do need here is I want to know when this happens since I'm no longer looking at a single time. And I want it in Unix time because I really don't understand ephemeris time. So let's do this. Okay, that happens quite a bit. Um, now I do want to be a little bit careful here. And let's go even further and print out the star's magnitude. Uh, so we can look to see when a bright star is being uh, occulted by the moon. Much easier to track that down. And that is... the second which is the first so it's this um all right and this probably needs to be a small f okay it's the output we will go ahead and now um sort it by the fourth column um and we do want to see the brightest one first, so let's do this. Okay, so according to this, the moon is going to occult, or close to occult, a 2.56 magnitude star at this time. And that time is uh, January 9th of 2021. Okay, so let's, let's take a look here. We leap into the future. And... I didn't look at the exact time, but I, I think... Okay, there's the moon. Um, that's a faint star. That's a faint star. Is this the... Okay, so all these stars are faint, which means either... Well, let's, let's just go ahead and look at the... the let's just go through the day here. Um, I believe Akrab is actually a fairly bright star. Is that a 2.5 star? It is. So I think that's the star that it occults. So let me take a look at the time again. I was being a little bit sloppy there. 1652 G GMT, and right now it is, um, 1709. So yeah, this is, this is probably it. Okay. And it does not look like we're going to full occultation, which is okay, because... We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not really being that tight on this, we would see. So, yeah, it looks like uh, it's going to pass just south of the star, a crab, which is, uh, damn the question, what the hell is a crab? Um, oh, it's a star in the constellation Scorpio, so we're in Scorpio here. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. Um, let's see. The default state should be still. The real time does not really give us much. Okay. So that was kind of fun. So let's go one step further and look for it to be less than 150th of a radian. Um, and this should give us some real... Um, well, hang on. Yeah, this should give us some actual occultations, although we've got to be careful because these are also dependent on where on the Earth you are. So you could have an occultation at one location while not having one at another location. All right, so I've changed that. Now let's see if we can find the... Oh, wow. Is that the same one? Because if it is, we've got a problem. Same star, but is it the same time? No, this is on f uh, February, which is almost exactly a year from today. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So on February the 5th, it appears that it might actually complete its the thing that it wasn't able to do earlier. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Let's make sure that's an actual occultation. Now one, one weirdness here is that we do have the, the moon, I think, 
scaled. I, I wanted to turn that off. Um, mm, oh, okay. If I scale the moon, it's it's too big. Um, so this is the actual size of the moon. So we actually do have here a um, a fairly interesting. I'm trying to make it go not too. F okay, here we go. A fairly interesting um, lunar occultation that occurs on February the fifth. So now we cheat and let's see if anybody else I mean obviously somebody else knows about this let's see if we can get um, well that's that's okay um, okay I think maybe I need to be a little bit more specific here it might be too specific unfortunately yep I knew it Um, I also need 2021 in there. Um, okay, well, let's try this. Must include a crab. And even though it's a crab, it's in the constellation of Scorpio. Um, I guess we don't really need to check this because Stellarium is a pretty good check here. Um, there's a really nice um, site that lists all the occultations and stuff um, that I that I'm aware of, and I don't have it with me right now. Um, but we might end up using that to check our results, uh, or check his results, as the case may be. Okay, so this looks like we found an occultation here. Um, now we need to be, uh, the question we need to ask is, several questions we need to ask. One is, how fast does the moon move? Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and ask these questions here in this uh, readme.stream. Okay. Um, how fast does moon move? And the answer to that is, well, the moon completes a circuit of about 360 degrees uh, you know, around the ecliptic in about 28 days. That's way too general to be used as an exact number, but, and that's going to be very close to, I think, 15 degrees a day. Um, I meant 12 degrees a day. I meant half a degree an hour, which is really the correct value. Okay. So we're going to just assume, so we don't, you know, because we're, we're estimating here, just to be on the safe side, we're going to say, let's say the moon moves a degree per hour. And so the, qu the other question is, how close does the moon have to be to a star uh, from the geocentric point of view uh, to be occulted somewhere on the Earth? Um, and the, the answer there is the moon's angular radius is 16 minutes of arc. Um, excuse me. And the moon's variance in position, depending on where you are on the Earth, is is, um, is actually I think quite a bit bigger than that. It's like 30 to 45 minutes of arc or something. Um, let's see. Let's let's let's. Uh, the actual diagram that I'm trying to avoid drawing, but I, I think is useful actually. Um, we're, we're actually in this case. Well, let's go ahead and do it. I knew I couldn't avoid it forever. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw the Earth as a, a filled circle. Earth, which gets to be nice and big. Um, and then the Moon, which gets to be a lot smaller. Okay. And then the... Um, Okay, so this radius, this is the lunar radius, this is the Earth radius. Uh, and then the, the, this portion of the Earth, which is away, further away from the Moon, obviously you can't see the Moon here. Um, now I believe I can draw a line that's tangent to both of these circles. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Point 
on object intersect um, I know I've done this before um, tangents okay this and this that's right and this there are several tangents obviously here uh, the only ones we're actually going to be interested in are what's known as the penumbra and we will get to that here in just a second okay. and I think think I can selectively hide these and I think incorrectly all right, hang on. Let's see. I do want that one. I do not want this one. Um, I'm pretty sure I can't delete it. If I delete it, it's going to do that. So I have to actually undo. Wait, does this have an undo? Wait, crap. Oh, here it is. There we go. Okay. Um, but I can make them invisible. And I'm going to be very careful how I do this. That's actually one of the ones I want. That's one of the ones I want. This is one of the ones I don't want. And oh, here it is. You can do show object. There we go. And that doesn't. That just doesn't show that part of the object. And we don't want to show this one either. Okay. So, so this is uh, the penumbra of the moon here. Uh, and the idea is that if you have a star anywhere in here there is some point on Earth um, where the moon will obstruct that star. So this is the, the angle of where, um, this is the angle, uh, well, what's the, the real angle here is, <laughs> is from the geocenter of the Earth to the Luna center, the center of the moon, the angle is going to be, um, well, fudge. Okay, hang on. This should not be this difficult. Um, this is one of the cases where the star is really, really, really far away. So in th we can sort of estimate this angle by pretending it's at the center of the Earth. Um, but let me see if I really want to do that. Um, That doesn't make much of a difference because it, it turns out that's not going to be a huge, that's not going to be a huge thing there. Um, so I guess, all right, well, we know the Earth's radius, so we know this angle, oh yeah, we got to use the arc sine rule again. Okay, so this is the arc sine, this is the arc sine. Um, Interesting. I don't think we've ever computed the uh, the the angle for a penumbra here. Um, let's see. We draw this tangent here. That's a that's going to be an arc sine. Um, because then we'll have this uh, triangle here, and then we do the same thing for the moon, and then we could compute the uh, the uh, sum of. Then I think we we can get it from there. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and create a line. Um, that is a... Okay, let's go ahead and create a perpendicular line here. Okay. No. Perpendicular line segment. Um... Like point, this guy, perpendicular line, this guy right here. Okay. Now there's some way to, and I think I meant to say line segment, although I don't know if you can actually do that. Okay. Um, segment with given length. Hmm. 
Hmm. So I guess we could do perpendicular line and then just... Oy vey. Just use that to find the point of intersection. And then this is... I'm going down a freaking rabbit hole now. So this is the... Um, so point intersect this guy and this guy. Then I think I can get rid of this. Oh, I can I not get rid of this line? I can hide it though. Okay. Um. So then, one problem is I don't actually know the distance from A to this intersection point. Um, I know the distance from A to C, the distance between the moon and the Earth. Uh, but the distance from here to here is is sort of an unknown. Um, so I could draw this triangle here and then intersect this line with the circle and draw, uh, make this perpendicular and draw and compute this here. Um, but we would have to do some magic then to, to we'd have to do a little bit of math there to to compute this this angle exactly. Um, and to compute where this is. Actually, hang on, we might be able to compute where this this point is. Um, so we know the radius of the Earth. Uh, and we know we could do make this up. Okay. And yeah, this is looking kind of ugly here. And honestly, I'm not sure we need the... The one reason I'm hesitating also is because I'm not sure we need the exact angle here, even though we could probably compute it. Um, and what's weird is we could actually be like fairly accurate because we happen to know the size of the moon compared to the size of the Earth. So we could actually make these these drawings to scale. And um, and then use that scale to to get the actual angle and let um, let GeoGebra figure out that angle. Uh, so let's see here. Um, and I'm tempted to do that just because I'm curious to see. Um, uh, okay. And all of these I should probably know, but whatever. Volume equatorial radius, point two seven two five. Okay, so about a quarter of the size of Earth. You know what? I'm not. I'm not feeling comfortable with that either. Hang on. Um, okay. So there's. This is a right triangle, so we can get this distance. Well, we can't because we don't know what this this side is yet, and I don't think we know any of these angles. Uh, it's kind of bummer. Um, so I guess the, what we were sort of interested in is we can get the parallax of the moon's center because we know that distance. Um, Pomodoro time, back in two and two, maybe.
And we are back. Okay. Now we could estimate this angle uh, by looking at the um, just the parallax from point B and the other point here uh, uh, to C, which is actually pretty easy to get because we know the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Um, we'd be a little bit careful here because we do want to sort of use the 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 worst case scenario. We want to find the sort of largest angle by which the Moon can vary, and so we'll say. Earth closest distance uh, distance, and we'll just use we'll use roughly that number. Um, come on. Um, um, average. Da, 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 da. Max perigee, three hundred sixty thousand. Okay. Now the bizarre thing is, I actually have calculated these numbers myself. Um, so I do have them somewhere, but it's actually probably easier. I don't need um, Okay. I don't necessarily need it to be at a full moon, I just need it to be somewhere. Um, um I don't know why people have gotten so stingy with this kind of data. Um uh, it's a very simple question. I guess I can call it closest perigee, which is an extreme of extremes. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so this might actually have a more generic answer. Swear to God, we need to really stop this whole ad-supported crap. This is bullshit. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Parity of three. Okay. Parities vary by da 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 da. Um, let's just go ahead and use 350,000 kilometers as a, um, as sort of a, um, a distance that's below the minimum, which means we we will have some issue. We'll need to refine this a little bit, uh, but this is just for right now. And actually, we might end up um, we might end up using the actual moon distance f for this. Uh, in which case, we really should be computing the the center point and the perigee and all this good stuff. Um, but for right now, we're going to use 350k as our sort of our hard cut, um, our test cut point. Um, and the Earth's radius is. Oh, I should know this. The Earth's radius is 40,000 over 2 pi, because the uh, circumference was meant to be about 40,000. Uh, the circumference, yeah, it's the quarter circumference was meant to be about 10,000 kilometers exactly, original definition of the meter. So this is pretty close. Um, so what we're looking for here is the, let's see, the angle's going to be, da -da -da. Um, it's going to be opposite over adjacent, roughly. Um, so 350k over this number here. Oh. Did I just literally get rid of a number and not... There we go. So it's going to be this sucker here. And again, we're going to be very sloppy here because we're just looking for... Um, we're just looking for an approximation for right now. And if we want to be more accurate at some point, we actually would have to, um, we would have to actually compute the moon's exact uh, distance at a given time. Um, 
Okay, so the arctan of... So hang on, that's opposite over adjacent. Mm, something's wrong. Opposite. Um, so this is sort of... Okay, so this is the angle we're looking for. Um... Oh, right, right. This is, it's actually, this is this angle here, which is pretty big. We're looking for the angle that's giving you the distance between the two, which is the, um, it's going to be, so it's going to be the, that's actually very close to one degree. I'm kind of surprised. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can, if Calc knows about Arctan. How about Atan? There we go. Okay, so the arctan is, um, yeah, how about converting that to degrees? So, yeah, just run around, around degree. Okay. Um, so that means the moon's position, at the center of the moon's position as viewed from the Earth can vary by about, about a degree. The moon's angular radius is about 16 minutes of arc in addition to that. Um, so we have about 76 minutes of arc. Uh, if, a, if a star is within 76 minutes of arc of the moon, it is, it is a candidate for occultation. And 76 minutes uh, occultation candidate. So, and 76 minutes is that many degrees and about 57 so this is, so really we could have used 1 50th, so let's do that. And the point we're trying to make here is, um, when you look at 1 50th, we might not see an occultation from uh, right where we are, uh, you know, right from the default setting, but we should be able to move around the world to where there is an occultation. So that's the sort of goal here um, for right now. So let's go ahead and do this, and then... Uh, let's see, BC, right, and we're going to look for the brightest occultation that occurs somewhere in the world. Oh, that is again our friend, the 2.56 star, a crab. And this is on August 25th, 2020. So I'm, this is, might show the point, which is, um, uh, which is where the hell is Stellarium? Okay, let's go ahead and put this up here. Uh, which, might sh which will show the point, hopefully, that um, even though we're not going to see an occultation necessarily here in Albuquerque, where I've set the, the default to be, and what time is that going to be? 1852-ish? This might be embarrassing that we actually do see... There we are. And is that a crab? No, that is not a crab. Where is a crab? There it is. Okay. So here it is as viewed from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Let's speed up time and watch what happens. Okay, the wrong direction. Let's speed up time in the other direction watch what happens. Okay, so we're seeing like pretty much no occultation here. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can see the, um, the distance between this and the star is about... The center of the moon and the star is about, roughly speaking... Uh, less than a degree. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put on our globetrotter glasses. We don't actually need glasses. Um, and instead of traveling in time, we will travel in space. So now... Um, so you'll notice as we go north, a crab gets closer and closer to the moon. Um, it's kind of hard to see because it's kind of hidden, but I mean... There it is. We're at 50, 69 degrees north latitude. And, okay, it looks like we're going to miss, but we can also change our longitude. And that also will change the position of the moon because, again, the moon's position is very sensitive. Oh, well, let's go ahead and go over here to degrees. Um, boy, it's going to just dance around this freaking... Okay, maybe it's the other direction. All right, we need to go a little bit more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Apparently, 
apparently this doesn't have as much of an effect as I thought it would. The latitude. Oh, I guess because we're so far north. Um, yeah, because we're so far north. Um, change in latitude has very little effect. So, so that that's okay. So let's stay at 85 degrees north latitude. And then let's see what happens. Um, okay, I th think we're definitely going to get an occultation here. Oh yeah, easy. Okay, so this is this is how we are. Uh, this is how we determine that there's an occultation. But there's one other factor we have to look at. Um, if the moon is within, uh, th what we think we said 76 minutes, whatever it was. Um, 76 minutes, it's an occultation candidate. But we can't watch it every second for that. We kind of have to say, well, 76 minutes of arc, and then the moon itself is moving at, let's say, about, we're being very, very generic here, one degree per hour. So we just want to know if sometime within that hour it had hit the 76 minutes to, to a star uh, position. So for our informal sort of loose check, which doesn't have to be that accurate, uh, we have to, so if we're only checking every hour, we have to check to see if the moon is within 76 minutes plus a degree, um, which is 136 minutes. And honestly, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. One problem here is it might always, the moon might always be within two degrees of some star. Um, in which case, this test will have no real effect. Um, and now, now I'm worried about that, actually. So let's see. Okay. Um, yeah. I hadn't thought about that, but it's quite possible that the moon is, at every point in time, within two degrees of a star, which is not surprising. There's a lot of stars on the ecliptic, and I'm using a fairly high limit of 5.5 of, uh, as my magnitude. Um, so, 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 so. Let's not, I was trying to be efficient by only looking at for occultations when the moon was close enough to some star uh, to, to, you know, be potentially occulted. Okay. Alrighty, so that is not a good idea. It doesn't appear to be. All right, let's go back over here. So now let's go back to our our uh, HYG data. This is good stuff here. So what we're really looking for, and this is the this is where it gets really ugly, is the minimal distance between the moon and a given star, at a given time. Um, so the function that we're looking for here is, well, actually I think we can do even better than that. Um, we can do something like the eclipse data that we did for the uh, for the other um, for the for th for the uh, other penumbral you know for the other eclipse calculations that we made. Uh, let's get a little bit more um, since we're going to do this accurately. Let's go ahead and become a little bit more serious here, and let's go ahead and work out those actual numbers. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and solve this problem more uh, more accurately. Okay. What the hell? Wait, wait, wait. Where did this line come from? I'm pretty sure I... S Seriously? Okay, I didn't want to show that. Okay. I want a line segment from here to here. This is a right angle. Um... this, oh, I don't want to rename it. I just want to label it a little bit differently. This is the Earth's radius. Um, now you could ask, is this the Earth's polar radius or the Earth's equatorial radius or something in between? Uh, we're not going to be that picky about that. Okay. And I can probably hide point D. Uh, both in terms of showing the object and the label. We don't need that. Ooh, we got rid of both of them. Okay, cool. Um, and then the distance from A to C, of course, is the Earth-Moon distance. Um, 
let's call this point from intersection. Intersection of this. Nope. I said point from intersection. This and this. There we go. Okay, so now we can determine the length that we, well, eventually, we can determine the length of uh, AF and FC. And let me go ahead and draw the, uh, the perpendicular line here. Um, so perpendicular to, from this point to this. And then I want to choose the point of intersection. Uh, between this line and this line and then I want to get rid of this I don't want to show it you can you can keep it oh wow you can get rid of both of them at once if you sort of click between the two um, a little tip there wait what the hell why did that come back okay are you gone now can I do a line segment without having to? Okay. Okay, good. We do not need this. Ooh, no, 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 no. Be gone. Just wow. Okay. Um, this little D here. Um, I don't need to see the label. Okay. And I don't need to see this label either. Or this label. Okay, um, okay, maybe I actually do want, did want to see that label, but, uh, yeah, I actually do want to see that label. Um, and for that label, probably should call them E and C or something, but okay. Um, Okay, let's see. We want to find where this point is. Um, so what we know now that we could feed to Mathix or Wolfram Cloud probably. Uh, ER squared plus, this is, we'll just call this EF squared. Um... I'm concerned that we might not have enough data to solve this problem. So the square root of that, which is the, uh, which is this right here, plus the, oh, this is just the moon's radius, MR. Okay. Oops, come on, work with me. Okay. Um. Uh, F G equals and we know the Earth Moon distance. So we don't equal that. Alright, Pomodoro time back in two and two. There is one other equality we know which will help us solve this.
And we are back. Okay. And let's see. Oh, actually, sorry, the, the distance here is not EM squared, it's just EM. It's just the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Okay, so now we have, we know ER and MR. Uh, what do we know about EF and FG? Not a hell of a lot. We could also move this over here, so this is a continuous straight line, but that's, I don't think that's helpful. Um... Actually, it might be. Let's see. Um, let's see, this would be this. this. Yeah, huh. Um, so our goal is to find out um, AF and FC, of course. Um, and we sort of implicit them here by, by doing this. Well, let's see what we can do with this, actually. Let's, let's see, what the hell is this? Oh yes, this was some help. And as always, we created a new notebook because I don't really know what the hell I'm doing. Which is typical. And I'm going to try to solve this. I get the feeling there's not enough here to, um, to work with. But let, let's see if we can solve this. And I'm not even going to say what to solve it for. I'll let Wolfram, uh, I'll let Wolfram Cloud decide what to solve it for. Um, okay. So now I probably we do know that. Let's see if we can get it solved for EF. Okay, here we go. It will solve for EF if we know if we know. Um, E R E M F, but we we don't know F G, so that's not really helpful. Um, I get the feeling there's something else wrong here, so let me take a quick look. Um, hmm. Now, if I turn put G down here, we would have collinearity. Um. We'd have EF and G being collinear. Um, I don't know if that actually helps us compute anything, though. Um, then we would have this bigger triangle here, but that's not really helpful, or is it? Hmm. I am. I am sort of annoyed now. This should not be a difficult problem. Um, so we could go from, you know, I think that actually is going to be helpful. So let's go ahead and get rid of point G in the line that's associated with it. Let's go ahead and intersect two other uh, lines. Uh, intersect this and this. Oh, cool, you don't even need to draw the uh, the radius line. Although it just occurs to me we want to anyway. Okay, so this is still MR. No, uh, no, 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 no. Um, and this will be just, we're going to turn this into MR. Okay. So now, does that help us in any way? Okay, so we have this. Tri we could create this triangle here. Um, we could join this here. We still do have this right angle here, which is really nice. Um, So we could certainly compute that, that, no fucking hell. Go back to the arrow when I'm done. Okay. 
Uh, so now we have ER, this unknown distance here. Um, yeah, there's something I'm missing here, uh, which is which is the uh, the problem. Okay, so this is this angle here. This is an angle here. Pythagoras tells us this. ER plus this unknown distance squared is equal to this other unknown distance squared. Um, however, because we this this is collinear, we can use collinearity here and say that the um, ah yes we can get the slope of this line. Oh, actually, we can't. I'm gonna say rise over run, but. Um, uh, but that doesn't actually apply here. Um, uh, because we, th this point isn't over here, and this point isn't over here. Um, so, let's see. Well, we do know this angle here. Um, yeah, and I think we can get the other angle from that. Uh, let's see. So we know this angle here because we know the distance to the moon, and we know um, so this portion of this angle we know. Uh, because we know this goes through all the way here. Um, or do we know that? Let's see. Um, Oh wow! So we could draw a triangle from E to C there instead of to to F, um, and that would give us. Nope, that wouldn't be perpendicular anymore. Well, this is brilliant. Mm. And the goal is to find this angle and this point. And honestly, with the Earth and the Moon like this, it's very close to basically finding the angle from the center of the Earth, and then just adding the uh, the you know the the lunar adding for allowing for the shift in the Earth position and uh, allowing for the, the Moon's angular diameter as measured. But the problem is, of course, as it's measured here, it's going to change a little bit because if you're right. You know, if the moon's right overhead, its angular diameter is going to be a little bit bigger than if it, you're like over here or over here, and a little bit bigger than it is if you're going to be over in the center of the Earth, which is not really an observable point. So that is the that is the issue we're facing here. But I think maybe we're being excessively accurate here. Um, so I have a line here that uh, passes within distance ER of the origin and a distance MR of some point that I can identify, the Earth-Moon distance. Um, and the question is... Um, but I mean, there's a lot of points that are like, this point and this point are, the line passing through them would also, uh, would also, uh, you know, ha touch be within the distances that I just specified. So there, there's more to this than that. Um, suppose we could angle chase. Um, and part of this is, of course, I'm, I'm annoyed that this is a... Uh, oh yeah, this is the big thing that I found out last time that I keep forgetting is that the distance from... Yeah, this is this is where I'm being stupid, of course. Um, from the penumbral point, the the big th the big point is that the angular radius of the Earth and the angle sorry this is the angular radius of the Earth and the angular radius of the Moon are identical. That is the uh, that is the 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 main point that I'm missing here. Um, and from that, you can actually determine um, you can determine a lot of stuff. So here we okay. So this is this is where I fucked up. Okay. And really, I found this out last time when we were de dealing with umbras, 
and the same situation applies to penumbras. Uh, except in this case, the point F is between Earth and the Moon instead of being on one side of the Earth and Moon. Okay, so this tells me that the uh, the um, the angular radius of the Moon is measured from here, which is this half piece here. Um, the opposite. Let's uh, be careful. Right, it's the arc sine of the Moon radius over F C. Okay. And that's got to be equal to, we don't know what FC actually is yet, but that's, um, that's not going to be a problem. Because we know that FC plus FA is going to be equal to uh, a distance that we know. Okay, and the angle of Earth here, the ang Earth's angular radius here, is going to be opposite ER over AF. Uh, or actually the, the arc sine of that value. And by the way, if the arc signs are equal, in this case, I think we can assume the angles are, um, sorry, the, the ratios are also equal. I'm going to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure that's correct, too. Okay, so we know that this arc sign here and this, this uh, arc sign here are equal. And the big thing, of course, we know here is that AF plus FC is the known distance uh, EM. Okay, in fact, uh, let's see if we can solve it like this. Um, so, and I'm hoping it'll solve it something useful, but if it doesn't, we can always specify which variable to solve it with. I, yeah, we do need brackets because there are two separate equations here. We could simply replace this equation by putting in here uh, EM minus FC or something, which we might end up doing if this doesn't work. And now it kind of bugs me because I'm pretty sure we've actually seen the solution to this before. Um, that's what you get when you stick with me. Redundancy. Um, yep, because of course we're using Mathematica, we have to do this. We have to call our functions like this instead of like with parentheses. And I'm actually okay with that. That's actually a decision Mathematica had to make because uh, mathematical notation is surprisingly ambiguous. Okay. So, okay, this doesn't actually help us any because I think this is just what we gave it. Um, Earth radius is equal to AF. Okay, so we're going to get rid of our... We're going to let... We're going to help out Mathematica. Well, let's see if we can solve this for uh, AF. Let's see what that does. Inconsistent or redundant transcendental equation after reduction, the bad, okay. Solve it for FC. I think we're going to get the same problem. Yep. Alrighty. So, anyway. The arc sine of the moon radius divided by FC, which is this. Uh, let, let's make sure that that angle actually is what I think it is. So, this is this angle here. Um, wait. Yeah. Opposite over, this is, this is a right angle here. Hypotenuse. Um, so it's this angle here. And we're talking about the, um, the angle here. I think we should probably get rid of this line. It's no longer, uh, relevant. And the angle here. Uh, this arc, the arc sign here is, um, opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, I almost had that. Oh, I'm sorry, we're measuring from angle F. My, my, my bad. This angle here is opposite, its sign is opposite over hypotenuse. And also, opposite over this hypotenuse. And those angles are the same. So, arc sine MR over FC. This actually could, could come back up here now. Um, opposite, 
double hypotenuse is equal to oxine ER over AF. And then AF plus FC is the Earth Moon distance. So instead of saying that, let's get rid of one of our variables. Um, let's just call AF EM minus FC. Because now we have one variable we want to solve for. Uh, unless I'm doing something terribly wrong and, and bad things are going to happen. I'm pretty sure we can also substitute this in for, take the sign of both of these and get, get the answer if we have to. So let's do this, this, ooh, and solve. Okay, now, solve it over the reals, although it really should have a solution over everything. Okay. All right, something's wrong here. Let's just say that MR over FC is equal to ER over EM minus FC. This is a very simple equation. Um, oh, you don't need this one anymore. That's maybe the problem. Okay, and I'm pretty sure we've seen this before. Um, you can simplify that, god damn it. Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are back, kind of. Okay. So we have this, uh, Earth Moon times Moon Radius over Earth Moon Plus, and I'm, I know I've seen this equation before, so I feel kind of bad here. Um, especially since we might end up not using it. So we can now compute this point the star is so far away that it doesn't really matter. All we know is really the angle. And the angle we want to measure is uh, C, you know, this um, angle we want to measure is from F to the star compared to FC. So the angle here, where this is a distant star somewhere. And let's go ahead and put it in. And call it uh, call it S for star. And the angle we're interested in here is um, C F F yeah C F S. We're going to compare it to the angle that we just computed to see whether it's within that whether it's within this sort of range here. Okay. Um, uh, 
And what I'm claiming is we could actually compare it from here and use the same angle, which doesn't look like it's true, but it but the compared to the the how far away the star is, the Earth and the Moon are pretty much the same point. Uh, so we could certainly do that. So the only real com computation here is if you're measuring this uh, vector that goes from the Earth to the Moon, comparing that, you know, using the angle between that and the star, how big or small does it have to be uh, for there to be an occultation? In other words, what is this angle here um, that is going to be very similar to this, this sort of angle here uh, that measures the... Um, that allows for the uh, actually sorry this angle here that sort of allows for how how wide of a range we were allowing the moon to be in um, and that angle is going to be uh, so we know what FC is we know that um, what AF is um, Okay, and we're saying that AF, okay, right, right, right. And we're saying that AF is just um, EM minus FC. Um, oops, undo, undo. We need that. Okay. All right, so we have, uh, we have this, we have FC is equal to this. We have, uh, now we need the angle, which is going to be, I guess we could get it either way. It's going to be twice. Um... um ER over AF. Well, let's go ahead and use the one we actually already had, so hang on. FC is the one we have, okay. And all of those are known, right? So FC is the one we have, so it's actually going to be. The angle here is going to be. Sorry, once again, it's the angle here that I'm looking for. Uh, MR over, so our sign is going to be MR over FC. So, um, that almost made sense. Hang on, there's something wrong here. Uh, with my thinking, not with the, not with what we just did. Okay. So the angle F here, uh, we're going to need to double it as well, but the angle F here is going to be, uh, have the, uh, the sine opposite MR over hypotenuse, which is FC, which we just computed. Okay, so then we want MR over <laughs> EM times, this is the whole thing, EM times MR over ER plus MR. Um, and I've seen that one too before, that looks correct. And that of course is the, the arc sign of that angle. So the angle itself is just going to be two times sine of this. Which I don't think simplifies, I think that's just a... Uh, okay. Let's put an input form for Mathematica and obviously we'll have to change it to C. Okay, and now we can go back to our lovely Emacs, if we can find it there. Okay, undo. I'm going to do yank. Okay. And actually, I think if we're measuring the angle, it's actually only, it's only one of these, because it's, the, if the angle is less than this, we are, uh, we are in an occultation state. And once again, we're assuming this angle is measured from the center of the Earth. Um, actually, I guess we're actually assuming it's me measured from the center of the Sun, because we are um, we're the coordinates that we have for HYG are based on the uh, J2000. And I'm actually, it doesn't really matter, because the parsec distance between the Earth and the Sun is pretty much by definition. Um, one, no, I don't actually know what it is by definition. It's very small, so it doesn't matter. So here's, here's, this is the angle we're looking for. The Earth radius plus the Moon radius over the Earth-Moon distance. The Earth radius and Moon radius are, of course, fixed. The Earth-Moon distance does vary. So that is where we would, um, this is where we would sort of, uh, 
sort of need the calculation. Now, the, the, the ugliness here is, well, actually, hang on. Okay, so we've got moon pause here. And from here, we can 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 we can compute the angle of separation that we want. Um, that is the, the minimum angle of separation required for an occultation somewhere on Earth, assuming that the Earth and Moon have constant radii, which of course they don't. Now I'm going to be a little bit obnoxious here and probably do something I shouldn't be doing and declare some constants like Earth radius. Or maybe I won't do that. Um, okay. All right. So the angle separation that we need uh, is going to be... Um, so the only thing here that's not obvious is, th that's not fixed, is the, uh, the, um, the distance to the moon. And I'm pretty sure we can get that with uh, V norm C. In fact, I'm very sure we can get that from V norm C of moon pause. Um, so we're going to have sine of... And I need to put these numbers in, ER plus MR over V norm moon pause. And okay, mm and I think I'm off by something here. I think I I missed a missed messed up a a sign and an arc sign here. Um, so let me check something real quick. So let's go ahead and go to this. Look at this. Okay, so that tells us, we're going to pretend like we're solving it, it's, it's trivial though. Um, that tells us this, this angle here is, the sign of this angle here is MR over FC. Sine of MR over FC is the angle that we want. Um, nope, still not doing this right. The sine of the angle that we want is MR over FC. That's what I meant to say. Sine of angle that we want. So it's the arc sign is what we're looking for. And I probably meant to say EN here. Uh, actually, I have no idea what I meant to say. I'll just leave it the way it is. Um, oh, it is MR over FC. Yeah, so the, the sign of that angle is... Uh, sign of the angle we want is opposite over hypotenuse, MR over FC. So the angle itself is the arc sign of MR over FC. That makes a lot more sense. Um, and when we separate, when we figure out what FC actually is, it turns out this reduces to uh, Earth radius plus Moon radius over uh, the uh, distance to the Moon. I, I hope. Um, so I'm not going to be quite brave enough to put it this into the um, into the uh, BC lib.h, but let me see what the Earth's mean radius. I shouldn't have to keep checking this up. It kind of bugs me that I do. Uh, and I am, uh, no, I'm not going to use the Earth's equatorial radius because uh, I think, now come on. I have this number like in a million different places. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Because I have it like, literally I've memorized it, you know, in different places. Um... That is the Earth's mean radius. And I know I need dots there, thanks to uh, our good friend, um, uh, Fierce Crocodile. And the moon's radius. The moon is nearly a perfect, um, a perfect sphere. Uh, so that's not... Um, and the sun is also nearly a perfect sphere, turns out.
I guess I could use Wikipedia or something. Mm, come on! <laughs> Son of a bitch. I swear to God, every time I want something in miles, which is most of the time when I'm doing stuff, it's uh, it gives it to me in kilometers, and the few times I want it in kilometers gives it to me in miles. I tell you. There we go. That's, that's correct. I don't think that's as accurate as I have for the Earth radius, but I, I'm willing to live with it. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. <coughs> um, so what this needs to do is this needs to become a function. Um, that returns the minimal distance between the moon and a star. What's weird here is uh, it cannot return which star um, the minimal distance is occurring from because it's just a single, it just returns, it has to be one of those functions that GFQ can handle. We're going to cheat. So let's go ahead and write the function up here. And we can look at several other sample functions to see how we did this. Um, I think the even BC occultation is going to do this okay. All right, so basically this is we, we need to define the GFQ function as they call it. Um, and the GFQ function takes two parameters, an ephemeral time, ephemeral time, and a pointer to a double, and it returns uh, the, you know, the value that we are interested in. And in this case, so let's go ahead and copy this, and then we'll, we'll tweak it. So in this case, what we want is, um, the first thing we need to do is compute the moon's position. Um, uh, as, com as viewed from the Earth. And that's going to be, this is ET, okay. And the angular separation that is necessary uh, to be in an occultation state. Um, okay. And I guess what we want to return here, we, we're going to have to go through all of the stars, return the minimal value of the separation, but we can actually do a little bit better. Um, because we want to sort of, you know, we want to use the separation in, in, in a way. So let's go ahead and do this. Oh, I'm going to push this to git before I forget. It's one of the bad things about me. Um, it's one of the bad things about me coding on the VM is I sometimes forget to push as often as I should. Okay. Alrighty. So now we have this. We can just paste this here. Okay. And proper motion won't be an issue if we're you know, doing close to now time. Okay, and then um, um, so obviously there are going to be some stars that are less than two pi away. Actually, that's even pi over c is an impossibility. Um, actually, hang on. I'm almost sure I don't care about this, so I, I'm okay with leaving this as a high number. Um, I wonder if I can do this. I'm just, I'm just unhappy now. All right. So this is the separation, but we actually want, um, we want to measure the separation divided by the, uh, divided by the, the, min, the, the, the separation that we need. So this is, could actually be this divided by angle separation. If this number is less than one, we have an occultation. If this number is bigger than one, uh, we do not have an occultation. Um, being the minimum of all, all these values when we go through all of these. So if sep is less than min sep, we're going to do two things here. Um, Um, see what you can do. I have some information. 
Uh, I'm trying to get either a static variable or a global variable where we can assign which star has had this uh, has had this happen to it. Which which what, what is the star we're looking for uh, by ID? Um, I don't think a static variable would actually help here because we wouldn't have access to it. So let's see if we can do this. Now this is um, I think C scoping rules allow you to do this. Um, we'll set it to zero. Well, we don't even set it. Uh, so this is the chosen one. If separation is equal to uh, less than minsep, then minsep equals sep. That's sort of the standard. And the chosen one becomes HYG data I zero the ID. And again, that's something we. This is something we're cheating by keeping this extra data around. Okay. And so then after we're done with all of this, going through all of these, we don't return anything, but we set star value equal to min sep. And then we exit our function. Okay. So now we can use this uh, to, uh, to, find, um, to find where this value is less than one, which is presumably where we have uh, lunar eclipses. So let's see, we don't need this anymore. Still do need to return one from the function, return something from the function itself. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. Don't need that anymore. So we've got this all right. Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we're almost back. And we're back. Okay. And actually, I think I want to set a chosen because we get more information about it if we set it to the array index. Okay. So we will actually say chosen is just equal to i, the, uh, the index of the star that has the lowest distance from the moon. I think at this point we can actually have this return zero. Um, and double, okay, we don't need this anymore. We do need these. And we can set up our GFQ test here. This is our condition for, well, basically when it's less than one, there is a lunar occultation. So, I, I maybe rely too much on my old code, but I mean, This is so such an easy thing to do. Except when it doesn't work, of course. 
Uh, G fuds. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's be even more obnoxious and look for when we have a less than, because our condition here is going to be less than one. Yeah, why the hell? Let's do this. And right now it's quite possible that terrible things will happen. So, GFQ, the GF de decrement function, I'm pretty sure we can just use my the standard one in bclib.h, um, which returns what? Oh god. And da 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 I think it's just called decrease or something, increase or something. Between sigma equal da 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 geometric info, that's a good function, but not what we need here. And I probably should have just oh Jesus Christ, is decreasing. Okay, we want a less than, and the number we want it to be less than is 1. And gee, well, because I knew what I wish I knew what the rest of these meant. So clearly not, not hitting on all, um, on all 10 blasters or whatever. Clearly not 100% uh, today. Uh, it could just be, I don't know, the coronavirus, some other virus, or I could just be in the process of dying, which of course we all are m all the time, unless you accept the fact that, um, these are defined scalar, unless you accept that somehow exercising can make you live longer, more so than the amount of time exercising itself is taking you, but whatever. So adjust, what are oh, the adjust is for the, um, the adjustment of the, the corner windows. Um, which we don't, which we don't need. Um, and then the, the step here, I, this is kind of ugly because we, right now we're using the tightest possible, um, the tightest possible timescape. So we have to use something like 60 seconds just basically to, to get it, um, to get it down to something reasonable so we can catch small occultations. Uh, and then... This is actually fairly annoying. Let me go ahead and do two things. First of all, if we are going to do this, we want it to be now. And second of all, oh, we're actually not in the right place. We need to be... Wow, that is one ugly looking sun. That's my dad said when I was born. No, not really. Um, how can I... Whoa. That is like funky, but how do I turn it off? I mean, this is this has now become too uh, too much detail. We don't need that level of detail, but that that's okay. Um, so I think the sun has set here. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, um, and then we can just put in here max win cn which we're going to define here in just a sec cn fine and, and cn fine and result are c spice windows that we will create here in just a sec um, um i think there's a problem in that i did not specify times which is bad i need to do that here in just a sec and we also need to create um CN find and the windows that are the confinement windows and the uh, and the uh, and the result window. So um, CN find max win and the result window here. And I'm pretty sure I messed up GFUDs. Um, oh, no, 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 no. I need to find my CN. Okay, yeah, that's right. I need to now define my CN fine window to be. I'm, right now, we're just going to do it for this year. Uh, later, we can do it for some other stuff here. Uh, I maybe should have a. Uh, I 
I maybe should have a like a default program I can cut and paste from. This is getting kind of uh, so. Here we want to say beginning of time will be. Uh, you oh you know what I think I'm gonna do ear to et actually I think I have that function in bclib.h. Yeah, ear to et 2020, ear to et 2021, and put the result in the the confinement window. Okay, uh, the chosen one. And then, okay, and then we want to print out the results, um, which is basically we're going to loop through the result window. I, I, I mean, I really shouldn't know how to do that. I don't. Look at this result window, resulter. Um, God damn it. I'm trying to find one where I'm not going into like, uh, where I'm not going into sub intervals, even though we might need those for this at some point. Um, So this is the kind of thing we're looking for. I think that should be enough to cut and paste from. Okay, so we find the, the how big is the result window. We loop through it. Um, the only thing the result window really gives us is the beginning and end times. And I guess, yeah, I think I've made max one big enough for right now. Okay, uh, beginning and end times, and then we Print F, uh, percent F to percent F to percent D. Uh, the beginning time, but we wanted, of course, uh, ET to Unix beg, ET to Unix end. And this is a little bit tricky because in theory the chosen could change. It's possible that the moon is closer, is occulting two stars or more at once. However, I'm okay. I think this is okay. Okay, so this should be a nice preliminary way of seeing eclipses, uh, lunar occultations this year. I, I mean, it's probably not going to compile for some bizarre reason that I... Oh, here we go. Include expects... Fi oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. I confused include with define. Okay. Well, I'm not, can never be a real programmer. Um, did I actually try to, yep, I did. I tried to run GF FUDC before declaring avoid GFQ. So this is, this is why we usually declare, we, we call the, uh, the geometric finder after we define the function that we're looking for. That's, that's usually very useful. Oh, I kind of knew I wouldn't get away with that. Um, so instead of infinity, uh, it does, it, this could be any number bigger than one because we know that um, because the only, this thing is only going to be interesting when we're less than one. So if none of these are less than one, the two will be returned, and the two is uh, clearly too big to generate a result. So th th that's actually okay. Um, count undeclared. I undeclared. Jesus fucking Christ. Yep. One day I hope to learn how to program. Um, I'm just going to call them double beg in, see if it, if it complains. Come on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Finally compiled. Now, let's see if it gives us anything. It won't. I mean... I was kind of joking when I said it won't. I was kind of hoping it would give us something. 
but I could be right and it maybe won't give us anything at all. So this is not looking too good. Um, we are going every 60 seconds, so there are like 525,000 minutes in a year. I think someone actually wrote a, use that metaphor, use that value to do something. And is decreasing less than one. Uh, 60 second tolerance. All right, we'll give this a few more seconds to run. And uh, at, and this this might be where we've actually hit a limit that says you really cannot do 2800 comparisons each time to find the minimum distance. And there are probably better ways of doing it too. I mean, this is this is very inefficient the way we're doing it now. All right, let's go ahead and bump this up to 3600. Uh, do another make. Hopefully this will compile too. I hate it when changing like one thing and it breaks it. So this should run faster whether or not it will give us any results. Kind of up in the air. Uh, let's see if we have... Um, let's make sure we define the confinement window correctly. That should be about a year. All right. Now I'm getting a little bit suspicious. We could certainly have GFQ print what time it's being called with. Um, oh, wow. I kind of wish I'd output that to a temp file. Let's try that again. Now that is an insanely long time, so at some point we're going to have to find a much faster way of of doing the uh, the nearest value. In, in theory, we could look at the well. Actually, VSEP is going to be only one step harder than looking at the dot product and dividing by the product of the magnitudes. But let's take a look at this. Now this is somewhat interesting in that it looks like it kind of goes back and forth. Um, from the same star. Yeah, this is not going to be... Okay, let's take a look real quick at the Tempo Cults. They better not all be... Oh, come on. Are they... They're all 956. Awesome. So, either something went very wrong, or there's only... This is the only star that gets occulted. Um, this year, which is possible. All right, so right, right at the beginning we have, okay, and this is somewhat suspicious because the moon moves really, really fast, so. Um, the fact that if it's occulting, it should not be able to occult uh, the same star, um, at different times. I mean, it's possible these are all effectively the same time, but that's suspicious. Yeah, I don't see that actually happening. Okay. So let's take a look at what star 956 is. That's very suspicious. Oh, I know what's wrong. Um, yeah. Um, my attempt to be clever here by setting chosen doesn't really work. It does get set, but this is the very last thing it gets set to, because it gets called constantly, and then it gets set to. So, we actually need... We actually need a function that just returns what the closest star is at a given time. Um, and potentially could re return the uh, the separation of that star as well, um, but we cannot set it like this because um, it's only the last call of this function that this this will happen. Um, so that's not great. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, I have been going for holy crap two and a half hours. Not a great stream today, I'm not super happy with it, but 
we did get somewhere. I think we can continue this next time, and I think we have uh, there's some use here. We can uh, we can certainly uh, write another function that uh, returns the mincep and um, um, yeah, returns the mincep and also returns the the ID of the star in some weird um, you know in in a way that we send it variables that it changes just like. Uh, just like many of the C spice functions are written. All right, thank you for watching the stream. Apologies that it was not that good this time. Uh, probably won't be any better next time, so I can't promise you anything. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.